Hi there, it's Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. Now today, I wanted to talk about judgment. I want to really go into this subject of judgment because as my life unfolds and I get older and I get more wisdom, or I'd like to think that, you know, I'm wiser as I'm getting older, uh, certain things start to reveal the truth to me. And one of them is judgment. Now, when we judge things, and I've spoken of this in a previous video, we put them in a place of it being right or it being wrong. Usually the judgment is that this is wrong. It's something wrong. Now, so many things in my life that I believed were wrong, I'm starting to understand that it really isn't wrong. It's all to do with how you're looking at it. It's to do with your perception. Now I'm going to go into an example. When I was little, my mum used to yell at me and she used to smack me. And all through my childhood, this made me feel bad whenever I was yelled at, whenever I was smacked. It made me feel bad. Now for the most part, especially when I was smacked, I never knew what I had done wrong. I just knew that I had upset my mum, okay, and I was getting smacked for it. And I'd done something wrong, right, unacceptable, whatever that was. So growing up, I had decided in my adult years that I would never ever do that. To my children. Now how many of you out there are parents and have said the same thing growing up, I'm never going to do what my mum did or I'm never going to do what my dad did or what they said, the things they say over and over again that make you feel bad about who you are and you say you're never going to do that to your children. But then what happens? You become the parent, right? And all of a sudden you are doing those things or you are saying those things. <laughs> now there's an understanding, okay, you have to understand this. What's happened, there's two things. One is, you've been conditioned, okay, because you've heard this over and over and over, or you've had this action done to you over and over and over, okay, so it's conditioned inside of you already, all right, this, these actions and these words. Now what happens to be able to shift that, you have to understand where that comes from, okay? now. In my example, for the longest time, I said that I would never do that, you know, to my child or to my children. I, I could never do that. I could never make them feel that way because I knew how I felt and it felt awful. So what happened was eventually I did have my little girl. She came along and I found myself after the second year, third year going into the older she'd get, the more my anger would escalate or my frustration and I would find myself yelling at her. Now, the most important thing to take away from this is why. Why are you yelling? Because until, or why are you smacking? Why are you getting to that point of frustration where you feel that you need to resort to these methods rather than just sitting down calmly and trying to explain to your child why it's wrong or why it's unacceptable? Because children do understand a lot more than we give them credit for. If we just sat down with patience and love in our heart and we explained things to them, why a behavior is not acceptable or why, you know, it's the wrong thing to do if you want to keep using that word. Now, I discovered with me that my frustration was because I wasn't bringing in enough money to the house. I wasn't pulling my weight, if you want to call it that way. In a household where there's a relationship, there's always going to be one adult that's going to bring in more than the other, unless you are equally in the same profession or working together, you know, in a business together that you're building it together. Then the same amount of money will be coming in for both of you. But in each household, there's always one that will earn less than the other. Okay, and then sometimes we take it on board, the ones that do earn less, that we're not doing enough or that we aren't good enough because we're not bringing in the same amount as the other person. We feel that we're not pulling our weight. You know, no matter how good our job is or what we're good at doing, it's not enough. It makes us feel that we are less than. 
And so this frustration of being less than or not good enough, you know, when the finance starts to hit and you can't pay your bills and you can't, you know, or you're behind with your bills, in our case, you're always behind. And so I'd get frustrated and that would escalate, you know, when the we'd have financial stress, you know, that I can't pay the mortgage or we're behind a couple of months with the mortgage or whatever the situation. And in those moments, I would yell at my little one. But it took me many, many, many months of looking at this behavior and really questioning, why am I doing that? <laughs> you know, because it didn't make me feel good to yell at her. So why do we do it? Now, there's another thing for you to think about. When someone does yell at you or when someone does smack you, it makes them feel horrible inside. It does. As a parent, surely you know this. When you, have, when you smack your child or you yell at your child, you don't feel good about doing that yourself, inside yourself as a person. That makes you feel bad. So I want you to think of all of that today. Okay, all of it. That judgment about the yelling being bad and the smacking being bad and then you become the parent and suddenly you're the one that's yelling and suddenly you're the one that's smacking. So now what do you do with your judgment? Is yelling and smacking bad anymore now that you're doing it? Think about it. In the next video I'm going to address it a little bit more so you can understand. All right my darlings. Thank you for watching and remember to click like and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye for now!